Okay, as everyone uh, filters in here, I'd like to begin by saying aloha and welcome to I Teach 808, Empowering Hawaii's Teachers in Technology Conference, sponsored by the Augustine Educational Foundation and Sacred Hearts Academy, Honolulu. My name is Patrick, and I'll be facilitating this session. We're so honored to have the Hawaii Society for Technology in Education team join us today to share their 45-minute presentation on, I guess, EdTech Slam. And we're going to learn a little, little bit more about that in a minute. Please be aware that we, we will be recording this session. If you don't like being recorded, you may consider turning off your camera during the session or reviewing the recording afterwards. The recording will be made available on YouTube and shared on iTeach 808's website a week after this event. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to the Hawaii Society for Technology in Education team. Thank you so much for that introduction. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the EdTech Slam. If you haven't been to one of these before, you are in for a treat. It is hilarious and also very competitive. So you shall see as we get into this. Um, we're Hawaii Society for Technology and Education, or HSTE. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, we are a nonprofit organization. We serve as public, private, and charter schools. Um, we really are trying to inspire educators to use technology to innovate teaching, um, to encourage best practices, and help solve these tough education problems. So we welcome anyone, everyone. We'll tell you a little bit more um, about the organization towards the end, but I think we're going to just go ahead and get started. So I'll pass it on to Celeste. Aloha, can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Um, let's see, I'm trying to look for the, this, oh, well, hopefully you can see the screen. Um, and wow, it's so awesome that Augustine Educational Foundation and Sacred Hearts Academy loves educators so much that they offer this conference for free. Everybody, let's show some gratitude and honor Augustine Educational Foundation and Sacred Hearts Academy. Come on, now turn on your screens if you don't mind and put our shakas in the air and wave them because we really care. Can, I hope you can see my screen. Okay, so what is EdTech Slam? It's a short time demonstration in which contestants try to surpass one another. And EdTech Slam is an opportunity to share, learn and get creative with many of the latest tools within technology. And my first memories of EdTech slams were, what the hell? Doors slam shut because all the sessions, the slam sessions were all filled to capacity. Finally, one year I got there early enough to get a front row seat. And there was Bobby Willem on this massive movie screen having a conversation with himself. Yes, the real Bobby Willem was down below. It was mesmerizing and I felt energized to try out the slam tips in my classroom so I could be a cool teacher too. Though it is a contest in which we will vote for our favorites in the end, every one of us plus the students we get to reach will be the winners when we bring back our new skills to share at school. Gee-hoo! Lucky us, virtually each get front row seat in this EDU Share, sharing festival, we're invited to taste our rainbow melting pot of collective ideas to share with our students tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, we love you. Tomorrow, you're only a day away. So let's bring it. Okay, so first up we have Trish. Go ahead, Trish. Okay, let me share my screen. Oh. Uh oh, sorry. What is going on here? Okay, so I'm the first one and I am going to give you a two for one ed tech special. Okay, not just one tip, but two, two tips. My first one, oh, I went the wrong way. My first tip is about classroom screen. So I'm, it's been around for a while, not sure if anybody knows about it. It's a free website where you can have a variety of classroom management tools. They have random name picker, they have a clock, they have a um, timer, they have a text box you can put in. And I keep it up 
like the whole day in class. And I give them, if I say 10 minutes left, I put the timer on. Um, we use it for everything throughout the day and you can change the background. So let me see. Uh, oops. Um, I have it open right here. So all you have to do is click on that link and then you go to launch and you can choose your background. They even have animated backgrounds. Uh, I use the clock, the timer, um, text box. It even tells you like about sound, like if you wanna keep the noise level down in your class, there's dice you can use, um, random name picker, like I said earlier, it's um, full of stuff. It is my best friend in class. All right, then the next one is the cool symbol um, font generator. So if you click on the link in the presentation, it'll take you here and all you have to do, oh, you use it with Google Classroom. You know, Google Classroom, they just have one font. It's kind of boring. I have to put my own emojis or something, but I can put in here, like I have my topics by week, week four, January 24 through the 28th. And I can choose a font here. So I can choose this font. And if I wanna just copy that and paste it into my Google Classroom, I can do that, or I can also decorate it. So if you click on decorate, here are some decorations you can put with your words. But they go on, so just remember it goes on the front and the back. So it's kind of long if you choose this one. It'll show you this is what it's going to look like in your Google Classroom. You just copy the um, text and paste it right into Google Classroom. The only thing you have to be careful about in this website is the ads. There's a lot of ads. So in the beginning, it can be kind of confusing about where to click. But other than that, it makes my Google Classroom look so friendly and the kids get excited about what I post on the side, what um, pictures I'm going to put on for different weeks and it just makes it more appealing. So there's your two for one special today classroom screen and cool symbol for changing fonts. All right, who am I passing it on to? Shane? Uh, it Ellie? is Mike. Oh, okay. <laughs> So those right. of you entering just right now as Mike is setting up, don't forget you're going to vote for one of us at the end. So welcome in, welcome in. Yeah, go ahead. Mike. All right, get set up here. Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Uh, share my screen, optimize video. All right, here we go. So what I'd like to share, I'm going to get rid of this, but is um, how you can fancy up your backgrounds in Zoom. We're all in Zoom right now. You might notice my backgrounds moving around behind me. And um, I'd like to start with is, I don't know if you guys have seen this guy before. He became pretty popular during the pandemic, but he found some creative ways to enjoy himself while he uh, um, was in his office meeting and um, got pretty creative by using a fancy background. <laughs> also doing some fun stuff. Looks like he's still in his, his office there, even though he's out having a great time with his friend. And uh, one way you can do this is uh, through a great tool called Canva. So which, they just slid oops, into my DMs on Instagram, which was not that, uh, is uh, Canva, uh, which is what we use to create the presentation for you guys today. And um, Canva is completely free for teachers and students. And you can sign up and they give you access to tons of graphics and backgrounds and um, different elements you can use to create all kinds of different uh, different things, one of them being Zoom backgrounds. So if you go to canva.com slash education, you can sign up for free. And they've got a, um, a like a class management tool built in so you can give your students access to create stuff as well. But um, one thing that I want to demonstrate is the ability to create some awesome Zoom backgrounds and not just regular plain old Zoom backgrounds like some of us have. Um, but some fancy moving video backgrounds. So they actually have some pre-made ones in Canva. You could just do a quick search for Zoom video backgrounds. Uh, they got some great pre-made stuff, some fancy stuff, some class related stuff, um, some Zen space. There's a cool one. Uh, it's 
We are under under the ocean here. Oops, hide that. There we go. Um, and you can pick any one of these, hover over them, you see what kind of video animations they have. And uh, when you click into one, um, you can also fully customize it by adding your own stuff. So there's a great um, library of additional things that you can add, like other moving fish and text boxes. I'm just tossing in some random stuff here where you can like, you know, put your name up there in the corner. Oops. Nope, I messed it all up. Um, but you get the idea. You can customize it. And then you simply just download it. Um, depending on the size of the or the length of the video, it can take a little extra time to download. And it downloads as a video file. And then um, back in Zoom, you can uh, upload that video into um, your Zoom and stop sharing. And so we show you a few examples here. So like, not that one, but like this cool neon one. Can you guys see that? Yeah, that's working out pretty well, okay. Um, or if you wanna go a little bit more relaxed there, give your grade level something peaceful and calming to look at while you're talking. You got a fancy waterfall um, or something like this or I'm floating in the clouds, a few animations around me. Yeah, so you can do some pretty cool stuff, create some pretty fancy backgrounds. I still have my potty break background. No, I got rid of that. I had, I had a background where I, yeah, it says potty break on it. So I step away, you can let your, your class or your, your meeting know what, what's going on. Um, but yeah, so check out Canva, completely free for ed educators and teachers. You can do some pretty awesome stuff. And with that, I'll change mine to slam. <laughs> Thanks guys, who am I passing it on to? Who's next? Celeste. Yeah. Celeste. Take it over, Celeste. Think back, way back to our childhood. Do we remember a time when we've had to sit patiently, listening to someone talk and talk? and talk. Then we feel our eyelids getting heavy, a yawn coming on, and daydreams getting us sleepy. Aloha! Hi, I'm Mitchie Simmons. Good to meet all of you. If you don't mind turning on your cameras, we'd love to have you join us. Okay, Doki. Yeah, turn on your cameras. Let's go. Come on, turn on the cameras. No shame. Yeah, here we go. Hi. Let's go. Let's put on our cameras. Okay. Because we've got to move it, move it. Let's go. Show us your arm motions. Woo -hoo. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Woo -hoo. There we go. Now, everyone, on your feet. Come on, on our feet. Hey everyone, get on our feet. March in place, come on, march in place. Stand up and take some action. Woo -hoo! Let's be on a mission, keep going, come on. Let's be on a mission to find relevant ways that we can add movement to any curriculum. When we get everyone up and moving to learn, we cannot sleep at the same time. Come on, move your hands, come on everybody. Plus, even from a virtual screen, we can still reach our learners and get everyone moving from afar. Oh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> Yay! We got our energy pumping. This pump. Here is a math movement example. Here we go. This is a little bit more like a stretch. Let's go. So easier. <laughs> what is this, guys? And um, what is this? Come on, sisters, brothers. What's what's this? Put in the chat. Ooh, what is it? It's a, what do you guys see it? It is a protractor. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, so we're gonna mimic reverse biomimicry. Come on, come on, make the zero, zero degrees. Let's go, yes. Okay, we're gonna start with the acute angles. Acute angles, very small and cute, come on. 30, 45, and reaching 90, right angle. Let me go up to, Get bigger. Okay, here we go. And when we reach the 80, we go all the way around for a 360 loop. Everyone say loop. That's a math concept.
concept that we can totally bring into computer science because did you know computer science has loops? Yes, a vocabulary term loop is the action of doing something over and over again. Okay, so can we think of a loop? Come on, show us some loops. What? Oh, nice, Cece, go ahead, yeah, yes. Oh, I see, Trisha with the two hand action. Woo, woo, oh, Heidi, yes. Oh, I love that, yes. I mean, there, woo, woo, yes. Yes, we can, and our kinky sure can think of all kinds of loops. They loop their head, they loop their shoulders, they loop all kind of, <laughs> they loop them all, right? Hawaii kids can. Whew, look at the time. Okay, I put, I put the timer, hopefully I put the timer. Yes, okay. Okay. <laughs> so words move us, vocabulary moves us. I learned from Renee Oshiro, a remarkable Queen Ka'ahumanu teacher who moonlights as a dance and musical theater teacher. In her class, Renee Oshiro vibrantly has her students make motions to better understand vocabulary words. We can do it too, right? Like simple machines. Here, she goes wheel and axle. Let's go. Come on, everybody. Wheel and axle. Can you see it? Yes. <laughs> the wedge, the lever. And more, Renee brought me to my very first CAM School Ed Tech Conference. Mahalo, Renee. As much as we love code.org mazes, I have discovered that the happiest, sweetest spot for Kiki is when I let them code their own dances. Oh my gosh. Coding their own dances, students dream up and collaborate on code.org, the dance of this. So, so do you see that back over here? This is doing virtual when we were at home lockdown. The kindergartners, preschoolers can't think of a dance. We just add it to the board and then we run it and they know that we can dance their dances all together as a class. It's so much fun. Collaborative dancing. Woo woo, it smiles and giggles galore when they code the twist and the turn, the dab. Come on, dab everybody. Dab and more. A lot of jumping commands. I gotta guard myself with a whole lot of pads. Yeah, that's TMI, a story for another day. Joyful learning, hooray. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to share my screen. Let me know if you can see it or not because I'm gonna disappear and I will not be able to see myself. So let's try. Yay. Okay, I'm gonna try my best. Okay, cross fingers. Okay, uh, hopefully you can see this. Here we go. And okay, because we love to move it, move it, energize and thinking with active. Uh, yes, and, and so in code.org, there's student creativity, learning to code, get up and exercise with stretch breaks. And that is my timer, but check out Hawaii Dance Party. Thank you. Wait a second, I have to follow that. That's not cool. <laughs> Who picked this lineup? That's terrible. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I promise you that, Mike, you won't have to exercise when we do this uh, this slam, but I will promise you that it'll make your lives a lot easier. OK, and that's what one of the things I want to show you is, of course, um, getting more out of your Google Calendar. OK, so I know Google Calendar is probably the most ignored uh, Google app there is because we just yeah, we put events in there. We boss tells me when to make meetings and we're good to go. Right. So. Um, I'm hoping you're seeing my screen right now. Yes, you see my Google Calendar screen, great. Okay, so two things I'm gonna talk about is finding a time to meet. Have you ever, if you've been part of HISTI or you're in a group of people that, that meets frequently, finding a time nowadays is insane. There's like seven or eight different um, emails will fly back and forth saying, well, sorry, Christine, I can't make it at that time. What about this time? And then of course, Heidi comes back and goes, well, I could make it at the first time, but this time I can make it half an hour later everybody's looking at their calendars trying to figure this out, right? So that's one I'm gonna show you. And second one is of course, um, using this appointment slots right here, making sure that you use this appointment slot. So actually we have several schools in our complex here that are using this for their parent-teacher conferencing, setting up parent-teacher conferencing for virtual conferences. And so uh, I'll show you how to really quickly set that up as well, all right? So with that said, I'm gonna get out of this and I'm gonna go into my dreaded um, DOE calendar, which is I believe, um, this one here, uh, nope, that's not my calendar. Let me get out of here. There we go. Let's minimize this. Okay, so 
Here is, of course, uh, this is a preview of something Cece's about to show you. So I'll let her take care of that, but just to give you a little teaser. So yeah, don't look, don't look. <laughs> all right, so here's my calendar. As you can see, it's a complete mess, right? And this isn't even all my calendars turned on that I'm supposed to be tracking. So but what I wanna do is I need to find a time to meet with CC and I need to find a time to meet with Trisha and I need to find a time to meet with Celeste. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up an event. I'm gonna do it for this Saturday. Since, you know, I have Saturday off for the first time ever. So let's go ahead and see if I can find a time. I'm gonna say EdTech meeting, okay? Actually, we're going to do EdTech exercise because Mike wants to do some more exercise. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick what time, let's say I wanna, I ideally wanna meet at this time, but I'm not gonna pick one yet, I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm gonna go ahead and add in Cecilia. There she is, her K-12 address. I'm gonna go ahead and add in Trisha. And there's her address. And I'm gonna go ahead and in, in Celeste. Um, oops, I cannot spell Celeste. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and add you guys in there. Okay, there's gonna be a Google Meet, so I'll add this in here. And now before I go ahead and hit save, I'm gonna find a time right here, find time. Watch what happens. I've now got all of your calendar. I don't know what's on it, depending on how your calendar settings are, but I can actually see when you guys have openings. So I'm seeing here that CC is busy on Monday afternoon, can't do anything there, right? I'm seeing over here, um, we've got another busy here from Trish. She cannot do it two to 205. So now I can look in here and find, hey, Wednesday might work out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that for Wednesday right there. Let's put that, it's got the Wednesday in there, time is in there already. All I did was click on the open slot where we all have an open slot. And now I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Or do you wanna send them a message? Absolutely, I'm gonna send you guys a message. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna send you. It's just gonna be a secret. You better show up to that meeting. I better actually go back and remember to delete that because I forget there's gonna be a meeting in there. Um, so that's one, super handy. I actually just had a principal call me and ask me, you know, hey, can we buy the enterprise version of Doodle? I'm like, well, you know, Google, Google does that already for you, right? You can actually just find time in your, in your calendar. So that's one. Um, the other one I wanna show you is of course now appointment slots. Now I'm gonna to try to find down here, hey, here's a nice time. I've got nothing really scheduled. That's probably spring break, right? No, no, not quite. Okay, so, but I'm gonna say, I wanna set up a meeting with all of my 17 schools to talk about computer science or talk about math. So, but I want a one hour time slot. So I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna say CS uh, quarterly meeting, right? Quarterly meeting. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit appointment slots. I want them to be a 60 minute slot. Okay, and I'm gonna run this from February 7th to February 10th. Okay, put that in there. And I'm only gonna run it from 10, uh, let's say we're gonna run it from lunchtime. Uh, let's just say we're gonna run it from 8 a.m. until 12 p.m. So there's only gonna be four appointment slots each day, okay? And I can obviously go into more options if I want and add up reminders, all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And now you'll see that there's this appointment in here, this long appointment. And within there, you can actually go ahead and share this link to the people that you want to sign up and what they'll see when they click on this link are those appointment slots right here. So they can actually sign up for an appointment slot. Once I take it up, um, I'm actually going to here. So since this is my calendar, I'll go ahead and copy this and paste it into the chat here real quick. And if somebody would like to go ahead and click on that and sign up for a slot to show us what's gonna happen when they do sign up. Absolutely, reserving school rooms as well. Thanks, Cece. Thanks for helping me win this slab. <laughs> All right, so let's see, did anybody sign up to come to my meeting? I don't see anybody yet, so let's see. A lot of slots in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and come back out to my calendar. And what you'll start seeing is, there we go. So we have, Sharon is gonna meet with me. And so notice prior to that, it was just this green bar, but now I have Sharon's meeting here at 10 o'clock. And as you guys feel this in, there you go, I'm at a meeting with Terry Hulk at nine o'clock. You're, you're populating this just by having people come in. Now there's no more of this, again, do you have time here, Principal, you know, Principal Chung? Do you have time to meet? And Principal Fricano, do you have time to meet? And no, uh, can we another time? And then those people can actually join in and, and add other people to this event too, if they have a team they want to meet with me. So anyway, super simple, two simple things to help get more out of your calendar, right? Um, and, and if you find anything else, share with me. I'm, I'm like, glued to my calendar nowadays. So if it's not on my calendar, I'm probably not going to show up. So anyway, awesome. I will be canceling all these appointments though, because as much as I'd like to meet with you guys, uh, unless you need some like uh, 
ed tech support, then I'm going to cancel this event. But thank you very much. And that, of course, is my slam. So Vince Carter from Toronto. Yeah, right. Greatest slam ever. All right. Stopping sharing. I think I'm handing it over to our wonderful president, Cecilia. Wow, you even made your own slam slide. And by the way, everyone, Shane hid that from us because we did not see that slam slide until now. <laughs> okay, all right, awesome. So let's see if I can do this well. Okay, so can you all see my screen? Can you see the Canva? Okay, so how many of us have a million and one emails just sitting in our inbox? It's okay, don't be ashamed, just let it out. I had so many, I, I, it was embarrassing. Like when my kids would see it on accident, when I'm putting it up on the screen, they're like, Ms. Chung, that's a little bit much. Um, so when I looked at that, I um, actually cannot give myself credit. I'm, the credit goes to Mr. Chad Nakapui, who found this video and he sent it to me. I don't know if anybody knows who that is, but if you see him, please tell him we remember and love him. <laughs> but he basically sent me a video about inbox zero, how to get your email inbox down to zero and basically creating an email system so that you don't have 50,000 emails just sitting in your inbox. Because what happens is when you're looking at one email and then you're looking at four others below it, your brain is trying to do all these things at once instead of it being organized in a certain fashion. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to show you, did it show, does it show my email now? Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm going to show you real quick how to set this up. Now, I'm going to be going pretty fast because we only get five minutes for these slams, but um, I'm going to send you a video as well so that you can have the link and just kind of walk through with this person who actually created the whole tutorial system, which is where Chad also got it from. So first, you're going to go to the um, settings and you're going to click on advanced because all of you in here are so advanced. And when you get into that advanced section, you're going to make sure that auto advance is enabled. So it's enabled right there. And then I'm just going to click save. Then I'm going to go to my general settings and in my general settings, I'm going to go to auto advance at the bottom and make sure that it goes to the next and newer conversation. And I'm going to scroll down even more down to the keyboard shortcuts and make sure my keyboard shortcuts are on. So I'm going to save the changes here. Then I'm back at my inbox, go back to my settings. I'm going to create four different labels. This part is really important because this is where the organization starts. My first label is going to be called follow up. These are the things that I want to follow up with and have an actual action attached to them. I'm going to make a label called waiting. And this label is for the people who I'm waiting for response from. So maybe Shane, I sent him an email like two weeks ago. I'm like, come on, man, where's that email? I'm telling you, I need a response. I'm going to sit that into my waiting um, inbox. The last one that I'm going to put in is my read through email. And that's the emails that kind of like, there's no action attached, attached to it, but I want to look at it. I want to read it a little bit longer. Um, so I'm going to make that one as well. Next thing I'm going to do is go to my inbox setting. This part is the thing that blew my mind. You can actually have multiple inboxes. You don't have to have just that one sitting stream of, of emails. So when you do it, you won't have this already, but you will be typing in L colon follow up. L colon waiting and L colon read through. So these are sort of like the secret keyboard shortcuts that will help you organize your emails into the action item list, the awaiting reply list, or the read through list. So whatever your labels are, after you do that, you're gonna make sure you save those changes and back to the settings just to make sure. So inside of that inbox setting, just making sure we want that multiple inbox to actually be on the right side of our main inbox. And then we're going to go down and make sure there's no markers and don't override. So again, if you're like, CZ, I have no idea what you're talking about. You're going way too fast. My students tell me that every day. Don't worry. I'm going to give you a video that you can watch later because teachers know we have to differentiate. And I had to differentiate for myself. This video took me a long time to walk through. So do not worry about that. Okay, so everything is saved. Now I have, when you put that up, now you have three different inboxes here waiting for you. If you're the type that likes colors, then you can go down over here and make sure that the follow-up color is like this intense, stressful red. You can make sure the read-through is like this you know, I don't know, green because you like to read through things. And I like to make my waiting yellow. So I'm going to look through my main inbox. These are all the emails that have been sent to me. I have this one right here that it says, I need to do this form by next week, Monday. It says, dear you, don't forget to sign that thing that we need for that important meeting at that important time. You need to do it by next week, Monday. So I'm already going to sort this. I'm going to click L, which I've already coded as label. And then I'm going to start typing follow-up. I'm going to click it. 
actually, I don't even click. I just press, press enter and it would apply. And then I'm going to press E. And when I press E, it archives it. So when it archives it, it'll go into the action item section. So same thing here, L and then waiting. And then I'm going to archive it. So you notice how it's being pushed into these inboxes on the right side here. This one I got, I have an advertisement. It's just a bunch of spam. I hate those spam emails. You know, they're coming in and it's so frustrating. So I'm just gonna delete this. The delete for this is shift three. So I'm just gonna delete it, get it out of there. And this one is, um, don't forget this. this is another action item. Oh my gosh, I have so many things to do. And then the last but not least is an article that someone sent me that I really wanna read later. So I'm just gonna go L, I'm sorry, not L, waiting L and read through. So then what I can do is now I have my action item list. I just go through this list kind of in the mornings and I check if I do it, I just click the label off and then it exits my action space and I feel really good about it. So that is, look at this, don't, doesn't this make you so happy when you see no new mail inbox zero, it like brings tears to my eyes. And that's how I know that I am gonna win this by slamming everybody out of here. And I'm gonna send you that YouTube link and that is all I have, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, very nice, CC. Very nice, very nice. Yes. Yeah, so, um, actually, absolutely excellent. Uh, yeah, I started. I put in the chat. I started off with like six thousand seven hundred and fifty emails, and I now get my thirty-seven to fifty emails a day that I just sort, figure out which ones are important, and I also put in the chat the gray is real. So CC didn't mention that, but the gray is real. It is depressing to constantly look at that gray, and it constantly weighs on your mind. Like even if you dealt with it, it's still there. Why? You've dealt with it, get rid of it. Just have your, your main goals, right? All right, so I think we're good. We're gonna launch the poll and here we go. So you should all be seeing a poll down at the bottom. So make sure that you're picking the fourth name, which would be Shane and, and voting for me so that I can finally win one of these slams, right? And here we go, launching the poll. Hopefully everybody can see it. I'm gonna share my screen so that you guys can see that I'm not cheating, it's a live poll. So here we go, all right. Yeah. No, no, no. Shane, not Celeste. Shane. So. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and vote. Yeah, this gray, not good. So. <laughs> There's a um, chat question. Can oh. we go over who went over what again? Absolutely. So, Tricia, you want to unmute yourself? You went over. Uh, I. Um, introduce classroom screen that has all the classroom management tools and then cool symbol to change your, make your font fancy in Google Classroom. Absolutely. Okay. And then we had uh, Mike jumped in there with Canva, which is of course where the slideshow mm -hmm. is on. <clears throat> zoom right. backgrounds. Yep. And zoom backgrounds. Let me try to pull it up here for you guys. Right. There we go. Then we had, um, move it move it with celeste and and her special guest i i think that's cheating she had someone else present for her but you know whatever so <laughs> totally different character and then you had that that amazing google calendar stuff you know saving you time and energy and 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 you know emails back and forth so that you don't have a zero you have a zero inbox because none of those emails are in there anymore because you're using your calendars <laughs> and then of course with cc doing uh zero inbox so go ahead and vote with what who it is you want to say has won this slam. Who has impacted you the most? It's a tie right now, three-way tie. So I got to have somebody come in here and break the tie. So are we voting? I don't think we're voting. I don't think I can I don't vote. Think can. I'm on the, yeah, I don't think I can. So. I'll vote for you, Shane. Hi, Heidi. Oh, there's, <laughs> that, there's my pity vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So are we ready to close this off? Oh, we can't. We have a oh, three-way tie. One more, one more. One more vote. One more vote. Okay. Who are you missing? Is it me? Oh, I it might vote. be. It might be. No, because um, I'm in close. hundred percent. hundred percent have answered. Oh. All right. Well, then I guess we end it with a three-way three tie. Three-way tie. The first time ever. <laughs> wow. Tie. Look at that. So it can't be. We have Tricano, <laughs> Celeste, and Cece. Winning in a three-way tie, and Trisha and I bringing up the rear. So you can't see it. <laughs> oh, did I, not, I stopped. Hey, can we do that? Did I? Oh wait. Oh, sorry. How's that? Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, it is viewing. I just click share. There you go. All right. Who is uh? Who's next? Trish. Okay. That's Trish, right? Handing it over to Trisha. There we go. Okay. 
All right, yeah. come on. Let me share. Uh oh. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so we had a three way tie. Um, yeah, I guess we have to. I actually, we couldn't vote, but I would have voted for Mike. So I think maybe Mike would have won. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> I would have voted for Celeste, actually. Yeah. Her, her high, high energy always gets me. <laughs> so then it, it, it would have been a two way tie. We were, you no, know, we were all winners. Oh, look, look, everyone had, had like votes. Woo -woo! <laughs> but we, um, we just want to thank everybody for joining us today. And again, thank the I Teach 808 sponsors, Sacred Hearts Academy and the Augustine Educational Foundation. Um, we always have fun doing these EdTech slams and we hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, don't forget to um, do the survey on the website, iteach808.com. And if you are not already a HISTI member, please join us. The membership is free. You can join by going to our website, histi.org. We'd love to have you be part of our family. So again, mahalo and hope you have a good afternoon, rest of the evening. May I just add one, one quick thing? Um, yeah. Excuse me. Uh, sorry for that. Um, I, just a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, thank you all for your um, energetic participation. That was that was really awesome. Um, and I, we just hope that everyone found this session to be valuable. Um, just, just a little bit about the survey. The, the survey will be available at uh, iteach808.com. And um, it's a, um, it should be on the, you should find the survey link on the right side, the fourth link down. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put that in the chat um, really quickly here. And there is an incentive for the, for the chat as well. Um, it is, well, first of all, the survey will also be sent uh, to the email addresses that, that all uh, participants here are registered with. Um, please make sure that you check your spam folder if you don't, if you don't see it in your uh, email box. Um, and you will be entered to win one of uh, 20 $5 Target gift cards if you complete the survey by February 4th. So again, thank you very much for being here today, and uh, we, we hope you had a fun time at the uh, at the conference. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Mahalo, everybody. <laughs>